Treatment-resistant depression is when a patient fails to improve after being on two or more antidepressants. And we know from the STAR-D trial that the more antidepressants a person needs to try, the less likely they are to have symptom improvement. And because of this, researchers have been developing new depression therapies, and one that has shown promising, rapid-acting results is ketamine. So by the end of this video, you're going to be up to date on the latest research on this medication and have a better idea of whether or not this is a good treatment option for you. So stick around. Ketamine has been shown to cause changes in the neurotransmitter glutamate in certain areas of the brain, and it's currently available in two different formulations. So there's IV ketamine and intranasal S-ketamine. Let's break down the IV ketamine first. So what exactly has IV ketamine been shown to treat? It actually can treat quite a few things. However, it's been shown to be most helpful in treating anxious depression, depression with anhedonic features, meaning the type of depression where we don't find any enjoyment in things, whether it's being around people or engaging in activities that you typically find enjoyable. And then ketamine has also been shown to be very effective in reducing suicidal ideation. So in addition to these three main things, there's also evidence that it can help treat other common comorbid diagnoses, including OCD, PTSD, social anxiety, and substance use disorders. Now, how is IV ketamine dosed and how long does it take to start working? So IV ketamine is typically given in a single infusion of 0.5 milligrams per kilogram over a 40 minute period. And what sets this apart from other treatments out there is that it exerts a rapid I want to repeat that, a rapid antidepressant effect, meaning that symptoms go away very quickly. And what we see is that patients will have symptom improvement within hours, and these effects typically peak within 24 hours. And then what's even more impressive is that in a study published by the Archives of General Psychiatry, 71% of those who received ketamine treatment had a response to treatment, meaning that they had at least a 50% reduction in depressive symptoms while another 29% achieved remission the day following their treatment infusion. Now, you might be wondering, how long do these treatment effects last? Well, generally, symptom improvement will last anywhere between three to seven days post-infusion. So what we'll see is that a patient will get an infusion around twice per week initially, and then as treatment progresses, they'll be tapered and spread out over longer periods of time. Now, what are the common side effects of IV ketamine? Well, it's first important to realize that the majority of side effects that are experienced are typically short-lived, and the most commonly reported ones include sedation, high blood pressure, nausea, and dissociation. Okay, now let's compare IV ketamine to S-ketamine, which is the intranasal form of treatment. So what does this treat? S-ketamine received FDA approval in adults for treatment-resistant depression in March of 2019, and by August 2020, it was also approved in adults for the treatment of depression with acute suicidal ideation or behavior. And it's often referred to by its brand name Spravato, which you've probably heard about in commercials. Now, how is S-ketamine dose and what can we expect with these treatments? S-ketamine is given at a dose of either 56 or 84 milligrams and treatments are twice weekly in a medically supervised setting. And this regimen was shown to significantly improve depressive symptoms compared to placebo in a meta-analysis that was published in 2020 by the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry. In this study, they evaluated five trials that were composed of 774 patients, which is a good amount of people. Now, the other thing to know is treatment with S-ketamine is similar to IV ketamine, where you start with a twice-weekly dosing schedule that gets tapered and more spread out over time. And so what are the side effects that are commonly seen with S-ketamine? The top three include risks of dissociation, sedation, and reports of feeling drunk, okay? It's also worth noting that around 2.8% of people report suicidal thoughts after treatment, and this prompted a warning to be added to the FDA label. Now, if you're looking to learn more about options for treatment-resistant depression, click that top video.